So on this one, I'm sorry. Um, this one kind of gets a, a little bit tricky because you guys can see now we have two radicals. Well, we got to take we got to take into consideration any radical that we see. Any radical that we see, x plus x plus two has to be greater than or equal to zero. Two minus x has to be greater than or equal to zero, and then square root of two minus x cannot equal zero. So do you guys see how this one I included all three kind of constraints, right? You guys can see them. And now we just do kind of each one separately. x has to be greater than or equal to negative two. Um, x has to be yeah, this would be x is going to be, uh, let's see, less than or equal to 2. And then here, you're going to square both sides. 2 minus x cannot equal 0. So x cannot equal 2. I'm kind of skipping my steps a little bit. But does anybody have any questions on how I got to each one? I'll be more than happy to go back. Everybody's good? OK. With it? I just used inverse operations. I already showed how to do that. So, um, so anyways, let's go and let's use a number line for this one. Okay, good old number line. Here's zero, one, two, three, negative one, negative two, negative three. So let's graph these separately. First one, x is greater than or equal to negative two. So you go to negative two. Is negative two included? Yes. Fill it in. All numbers greater than negative two are going to the right. Let's do the next one. X is less than or equal to two. Is two included? Yes. x is less than or equal to. That's going to all the values over there. However, when I go back to my third constraint, it says x actually cannot equal 2. So I have to redo this as an open circle. And if you guys remember compound inequalities, compound inequalities were only true where they intersected. So this domain is only going to be for the intersection. It's only going to be true for the intersection of those two uh, constraints. Because it can't be, you can't have one radical be true and not the other one be true. They both have to be true. Does that make sense? Right? You can't say, I don't know what number, let's see, I guess three. three. Three works for this, but it doesn't work for that. Well, that, it has to work for both of them, right? So therefore, my negative two is contained, and that's the smallest number. And it goes up to positive two, which is not contained. So that's a parenthesis. OK? Yes, questions? In the uh, interval notation, that would be written as negative 2 is less than or equal to x is less than 2, right? Yep. 